but the sweet potatoes, you can actually plant it off of the potato itself because I've done that before at home. We actually had a couple of sweet potatoes one year left over in the bottom of the fridge from Thanksgiving. They got forgotten about, they were at the back of the crisper drawer, so needless to say, come springtime, they were a little squishy. I said, oh, what the heck? We'll throw them outside. Well, they started to sprout. So I said, okay, fine. We planted them over in one of the flower beds and they grew and they grew. I never even saw them flower or blossom or anything like that because they will get a blossom on them. But come fall, we went to dig them up and we had full size, absolutely beautiful sweet potatoes. And there again too, because I did it in the flower bed, the soil was very fertile and very loose because the soil gets freshened up every single year. And that's basically the key with doing potatoes. You want to have loose soil. A lot of people up here in the north um, being that our soil in Sullivan County is very hard, a lot of people will actually um, plant them just under a quick coating of straw. And as the plant grows up, they will continue to pile straw around it. And the, the roots and the, and the potatoes will actually grow in the decomposing straw. It's very, it, it, it can retain its moisture extremely well. And, um, you know, it's very easy for the potatoes to grow because the less resistance, the bigger potato you're going to get. Excellent. You know, doing, the, doing the big potatoes up, you know, we ended up, we cut a piece off of that big potato. With some of your smaller potatoes, obviously, you know, um, what makes these easy to plant is, okay, I'm going to get more than two eyes, but I can just take it and just slice it. Listen. Just, just like that. That's geese I hear overhead. Yeah. Does that mean spring is coming? Yeah, spring is coming. The robins are out. Ooh. Spring is coming. And yes. Like, I like, like cooked goose too. Like you said, sure. let them sit there. Uh, let them dry up a little bit. But then pretty much, you know, once they're dried, once it's healed over, just take those little buggers. That's how easy it is to plant a potato. Not that easy because a lot of people's dirt ain't that soft. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> this is this is now be, being that um, one one of our garden center helpers is going to be in here tomorrow planting roses out of, using the soil out of this bin. Should I leave those potatoes in there and surprise them? I think you should. I think you should. He'd be like, "What? Here. Watch his." Oh. We'll plant that one in there and see. We'll take this now. Oh, see now you move the camera. See because this potato is actually so big. And I know people are saying, huh, he's going to cut his finger. No, it's a very dull knife. We just tell people that to do it just to be safe and be careful. Yeah, because I don't think they'll have time by tomorrow to grow. Wonderful. We sell these cheaper, but uh, people might be tempted to just buy a bag of regular cooking potatoes in the store and plant those. What disadvantage might there be to that? Really, about the only disadvantage to doing that is if you look at these seed potatoes, these are generally of a smaller size. And that is so this way you don't have to cut them. Every time you do cut a potato, there is a risk of getting fungus and things like that. And with your regular cooking potatoes, they're generally larger. Because obviously if you're doing a baked potato or something for mashed potatoes, you want a larger potato. You can plant them, it just means that you're going to have to cut them up you don't want to be planting a large potato. That's really about the only difference. Um, even if you look at like some of the potatoes and stuff in these bags here, the potatoes are generally smaller. Now most of these could still be cut in half and possibly in thirds. Um, as long as you have pretty much two eyes to a potato. But other than that, um, regular cooking potatoes, and that's really kind of what surprised me when Angie brought it to my attention with the price of this because 
I would venture to guess that they do not even get six dollars for a bag of cooking potatoes at Walmart and yet they want to get six dollars for a bag of seed potatoes because they're leading the consumer to believe that this is a better product for planting than what they're trying to feed you and it's really not the case this is basically just easier what they're really charging you for is they're charging you for oh let's see the preparation in uh, how many different languages here because of course unfortunately I'm not multilingual you know but there's loads of preparation you know and they charge you for the directions on the back which I guess if if we re if we really wanted to we could make up a pretty label to stick on the back of ours and I guess we could then get an extra two dollars for every five pound bag that we do and we wouldn't have to tell our customers that we know anything at all I guess we can't really do that because we don't have the luxury of a we don't mass have, advertising yeah, campaign right. that leads people to believe that they're getting the low price because we're the big guys yeah Oh, that's just like, um, for, for everyone uh, looking up landscape today for the first time on YouTube, you'll notice, hmm, because I just did yesterday, that Lowe's actually, for some reason, comes up at the top of the list now. If you just type in landscape today for a search on YouTube, now Lowe's comes up. So apparently, um, we're actually getting a little bit more viewership than... Uh, you know, and apparently we're getting a, a little bit more than our fair share, so they want people now that are looking at our videos to come look at their site, which I did happen to look at their site, and surprisingly enough, they have a few videos up there, but it's more like, it's actually a sales site. They want to come and sell you loads and loads of stuff instead of actually giving you pertinent information. They want you to drink the Kool-Aid. Well, thanks for the tips. <laughs> let's get planting these taters and let's make uh, let's make potato soup. I like potato soup. Yeah, I mean, just basically in closing, I mean, it's. I realize that it's like anything else. People believe what they read. They believe what they see, and unless you actually go out and look at this, you know, shop around. Check out your local garden centers because, boy, I tell you what, when it comes to spring planting stuff, you know, your, your local garden centers are generally going to beat the big boxes every time. But people don't take the time to look. They'll generally pass two or three garden centers on the way to getting to their local depot mark. And not only are they spending more time trying to find parking and get in the door, but they're going to waste money to boot. And do it before H.R. 875 becomes law. Peace out. I'll have you know, sir, that if H.R. 875 passes, those goods that you are holding in your left arm will be contraband. You hard foot and desperate terrorist, you. Come knock on my door. I'll be waiting. Outstanding. Okay.